Perhaps when we forget, perhaps it's when we forget of all that God has saved us from, yeah. that we hoard grace to ourselves and don't give it to others. Mm -hmm. Like perhaps when we forget the sin that he saved us from, the pits of hell he pulled us from, that we now, even though God didn't have this standard for us to reach that we needed to do anything to achieve his love, we have that standard for other people. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it is because we have a distorted view of God that we, it is grace that we have to achieve, that there, his love is something we have to earn, that we reflect that onto other people saying, you have to be this or do this to achieve my love. Yeah. One of the best things about God's grace is that it's welcome to everybody. Yeah. One of the gr greatest things about yeah. God's grace is that it's available to everybody, that everybody's invited, and that I'm invited. Gift. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. Yeah. And all of us are included in that invitation. But perhaps if I don't understand that we're all welcome and we're all invited equally yeah. to the throne of grace, and perhaps yeah. that's why I don't see my brothers and sisters as what, perhaps that's why, because I have a distorted view of God, I have a distorted view of who I give grace to or love to in my brothers and sisters, other people that live in the world. And so I just wonder if it is perhaps when we don't realize and remember the grace we've been saved from, that we are, we are not quick to give that grace to other people. You know, I love that God accepts anyone because that means I'm in, yeah. but I don't love that God accepts everyone that, when that means that y'all are in. And I think it's when we have to remember what we've been saved from. I think it helps us when we remember how loved we are. It helps us and empowers us to love other people that may not be like us, that may not look like us, that may not come from where we are from. And if we are having trouble loving other people or giving grace to other people, perhaps we need to take a moment to remember how God has freely received us and loved us as we are. Ultimately, that is how we are going to show people who Jesus is. While many of us are thinking, how are we going to show people who Jesus is? How are we going to reveal God's love to the people around us? Like, how are we gonna point people to Christ? We need to remember that nobody hates being loved. Nobody hates um, being forgiven. Nobody hates being fought for. Nobody hates being told more of who they are. And if we're reflecting Jesus, if we're echoing the character of Jesus, then we would be telling people how loved they are, how welcomed and invited they are. And we're saying, well, how do I point people to Jesus? Well, how are you treating people now? Do people around yeah. you want to know, why are you the way you are? Why are you so joyful? Why are you so peaceful? Why do you always believe in me? Why do you always cheer me on? Why do you forgive me for the things I've done? Like, do we have a life that represents Jesus well? That's how we're going to show people Christ's love by showing other people how loved they are. They're going to want to know, how do you know that? I want to know how you know how loved I am. You know, <laughs> nobody hates being loved. Yeah. I also wanted to highlight what Sheila said uh, and Cece said about, Sheila, you brought up social media and I love social media. I actually love when we use it for a tool for good. I think we can use it for a tool for good, but you are talking about how sometimes online we can see the perfect way to not show grace, right? right? You were sharing right. like things that you've seen right. online. Do you see it? Do you feel like you see it cross generationally? Because I feel from where I'm sitting that online, I wonder if some people, I wonder, is it cross generational? Is it based on where people live? Is it based on how they were raised? I feel like perhaps when I think about social media, I wonder if people know that they will be held accountable for the words they say online just as much as they'll be held accountable for the words they say with their mouths. Right. And Cece said something really yeah, powerful yeah. a second ago. She said, you know, what are the ways the enemy is having victory over your mouth? Mm -hmm. And I would ask, what are the ways the enemy is having victory over how you're talking to people online yeah. as well, right? Yeah. How is the enemy yeah. having That's victory right. in That's your right. attitude and what you're saying to people and how you're commenting back to people and how you're representing God's love online? Are you? How is the enemy having victory over how you are communicating with people on the internet, on your social media, on your Instagram, or on your Facebook? Is he having victory through your attitude or your words? I think it's something for us to consider. Yeah. We don't want the enemy to have any victory. Our words in our mouths That's or our right. words online. Hosanna, what is it? Um, wh what do they call it? Cancel culture? Yep, <laughs> absolutely. I think as believers, yes. I think as believers we should develop grace culture. Come yes. on. Culture. Absolutely. That's right. Come on. Yes. You know? That's right. The yeah. gospel yes. does not support you know? cancel culture. No. The gospel was, you've no. canceled no. those people, I'm going to those people. Yeah. You've canceled those people, I'm going to help right. those people. You've canceled those people, I'm going to lift them up. You, Peter, man, you are rough, but I'm going to build my whole church on you. I will not cancel you. Like, the gospel does not support a cancel culture. That's, right. uh, that's from the world. The world yeah. wants to divide, Jesus wants to unite.
And the truth is, he will never cancel us. We all deserved to be canceled long ago, but he'll never cancel us. And I think sometimes people hear this conversation and they think, but how can I extend grace to that person that did this to me and did this to me? And and, and really in truth, grace is forgiveness there. It's the same thing. But Grace is not a license to do it again, nor is forgiveness. And many times we forgive and we show grace not because they deserve it or even that it will release them from anything, but it releases us from them. When we extend grace, right. it like it unties us from the pain. It unties us from the hurt. And when we forgive people that may not deserve forgiveness, we got forgiven when we didn't deserve it either. And so mm-hmm. I forgive them, but it's not saying you can do it again, because that's why a lot of that's people right. don't do it. They're like, I, I can't give them permission. You're never given permission to hurt you again when you forgive them. You're never given people a permission to do it again. You're simply saying, I don't want to be tied to you. I don't want to be your judge. I just am going to extend grace because I need it myself. Yeah. And, and sometimes it means you have to separate yourself from them. And the That's only right. way That's you right. can is when you forgive them. Yeah. When you show grace to them, yeah. now you can remove yourself from the situation and God will do what God will do. Yeah, it's untying yourself from yeah. them. On time you can yourself. stay tied up. You can stay whatever. I'm untying myself. That's right. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.